our football game. We've got to tackle better. We've got to do the basic fundamentals of the game. We're all right as far as where we are in this ball game right now. What do you think of Carney's decision making? Well, I think it hadn't been as consistent as I'd like for it to be. But, uh, you know, he's done a good job and uh, he's made some big plays and he'll make some big plays and hopefully he'll be make a little better decision sometime with the fullback in there. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Guys, back to you. All right, Fisher DeBerry, who has a new five-year contract extension through 2009. Now, earlier today, Donnie Heaton set a Mountain West Conference record with a 90, I said, a 90-yard punt. Let's go back, Kelly. This was something special. And the context is Air Force is backed up because of an errant pitch. Utah is fixing to inherit great field position until this rocket right here was launched over Weddell's hair head right there and it rolls and it rolls and 90 yards later it's touched back in the end zone and so Heaton who later had a 52 yarder has been a victim of some bad snaps but I tell you he's hung in there pretty well so here we go and um, you know Kelly I'm not surprised this has been wonderful series between these two as uh, Alex Smith brought his team back after being down 14 to nothing but um, there's a lot of football left to be played to put a cliche right on the middle of all this. Yeah, we uh, need to pay attention to history and believe in it. And <laughs> the history of this series says that it's going to come down to the wire. Urban Meyer has been preaching that all week long. And we thought he was kind of laying low, laying in the weeds a little bit by saying that. But he believes it, and I hope his football team believes it. Greenaway will kick off for Air Force. Bo Nagahi, Morgan Scally go back now deep for Utah. And here we go. Greenaway hits it very well. There'll be no return here. They'll bring it out to the 20-yard line. Boy, Greenaway has really done a nice job in the kickoffs for Air Force. He has a younger brother, Brandon, who's a freshman at Air Force. Let's take a look now at the two QBs, Kelly compare their numbers in the first half of play. Well, obviously you have two way different style of offenses, but look at the numbers. I mean, they're fairly reasonable. The yards, total yards right there, 147 for Smith, and the majority of that came in the second quarter that really tightened this ball game down when the momentum switched to Utah. One of those rushing touchdowns by Carney, as we mentioned, was a 47-yard scamper. From the 20-yard line, here come the use. Up by seven. Smith on a low snap. Looks, throws, completes it. Catch by Paris Warren. And Warren's going to be knocked out of bounds close to the first down near the 30-yard line. Paris Warren, of course, with that big 65-yard catch in the first half. Just pitch and catch. Spread the field, which defines the defense quickly. And this is what you get. Look for Utah early in the second half to come out and throw it just a little bit more. This offense is about balance, but in the first half, they ran the football, and they weren't all that effective at it. Alex Smith, number one in the conference in pass efficiency. The guy just makes great decisions. And this time, uh, he's going to give up to Marty Johnson, and nothing doing on this play. They needed a yard. I don't know if he got it, did he? I Let's think see he where they're going to mark it. They're going to mark it across the 30. Partner, I think you give him about a half a yard over right here. First down now for the Utes. So Utah gets the initial first down of the second half. Remember, the first half started with Air Force marching 80 yards. And this is the series history. Last year, three overtimes in Falcon Stadium. Two years ago here, Air Force was down by 20 points and half, came back to win it 30 to 26. First down. Smith to throw field wide open catch is made up to the 45 by Warren again at the Air Force 45 Utah again moves the sticks just flat drop in the coverage a play action pass is meant to hold Rudzinski right there number 48 who's supposed to be under that route right there the play action pass draws him up and there's no one in that seam Finally, Mark Carlson over to make the tackle, a second-generation Falcon. They're going to mark the ball at the 45 of Air Force, an impressive beginning now in the second half by the Utes. Ganther is in it, running back, comes in motion, and he's going to get the ball to the 40, to the 35, to the 30. Knocked out of bounds, first down Utah at the 28-yard line of the Falcons. 
Ganther, a hard nose, strong, bruising runner. The thing that makes this offense so incredibly hard to defend, this is a sweep, a zone run up front, and then Quinton is just told to look for an opportunity, and when you see it cut up, that time he didn't find the opportunity to clear to the sideline. But when they can mix it up like this and get into the flow of the game, into rhythm, it's very hard to defend. So they'll mark the ball at the 28. First down, Utah, as they are right now looking precision sharp. Four wideouts, Smith again, and over the outstretched arm of Warren, thrown with too much velocity that time. One of the few passes that Smith has thrown today that was ill-advised, and it'll bring up a second down. And remember, Gary, we talked about in the first half is Air Force had a decision to make what they're going to do. Are they going to come after Alex Smith, which means you play more man-to-man -man defense in the secondary, or drop into a zone? They elected in the entire first half to go three rushes, rushing linemen to the quarterback and drop eight. And that play action is meant to draw some of those linebackers out of their zone. So you think maybe they're going to have to mix it up? Definitely. It's called for right here. Second down, 10. Quick pitch, Johnson. And a nice reaction by Air Force, Ryan Carter. Outstanding young man. A guy who's one of the captains has fought back from a severe knee injury over there to make the stop on the play. And uh, very little doing on that play. They'll mark it at the 30-yard line. Did a great job of reading the, the quick pitch. If you can see it in the air, you can react quickly yep. that time. And he came out of his right defensive end position, number 50, 53, right there. And then it's just speed to the line of scrimmage. And defensive coordinator for Air Force Richard Bell said that that's the most improved player on the defensive side of the ball for them. Loss of two, third and 12 now. Smith with time, scrambling out of the pocket. He's been flushed. He throws it near side, cut, and going out of bounds with the ball is going to be Jerome Wright, a senior who played junior college ball at Antelope Valley Community College, and that was just a basketball play rolling out and just playing catch with Wright. Yeah, I talked about whether you're going to come after him and leave man-to-man -man in the secondary. You could see number 21 Mark Carlson flash into your screen to come up and get Alex Smith he had to come out of his coverage on right and that was the result Smith just dumps it over his head for a big play so on a third and 12 they get it done first down at the 15 of Air Force Ganther has come back in just underway second half Utah with a seven point lead four wideouts again here is Smith keeping to the 10 takes a big hit as he just crosses the 10 yard line Day. I'm amazed how tough this guy is. Now, Alex Smith is bigger. He's gained 20 pounds from a year ago. He wears that black jacket, if you will, and a guy that they can ill afford to get hurt, but boy, he is not afraid of contact as that tackle was made by Mark Carlson. Yeah, they, they call him 212, but he actually says himself he's about 203, 205, and he takes a pounding, but he's a tough kid. Gain of five, second and five now inside the 10. Smith again, pitches, and a bad pitch goes out of bounds. He was standing so close to Paris Warren, I don't think Warren thought he was going to pitch the ball. He really didn't. And this is Utah's triple option once again. Fake to the running back, pull it out. If they take you, quarterback, pitch the ball to Paris Warren. Warren didn't expect that pitch. You're no, absolutely right. So They're they... fortunate it bounced out of bounds. So you can see in the red zone, 15 of 16, two for three today. And they have now a third, almost 10 yards to go. John Madsen's coming to wide receiver. He's put to the top of the field. Smith with time. Up the field, touchdown. And the grab is made by Steve Savoy. And now Utah has scored 27 unanswered points. Gary, we just got done talking about this. Air Force needs to adjust a little bit and get some pressure on Alex Smith. But if you're going to get try to get pressure and bring some linebackers, you better have sound coverage in the secondary because this receiving court from Utah will make you pay just like Savoy did right there. What an impressive drive by Utah. 14-yard touchdown strike to Savoy. Point after by Borenson is there. It's 28-14, and Air Force now has got to find a way to get back into this football game. 
Alex Smith engineering almost a perfect drive. At Arctic Cat, we do things differently. We build ATVs from first-hand experience. We hunt. We farm. We fish. We ride. And during our Wheel and a Deal at Sales event, there's no better time than right now to ride off on a new ATV. But after the game, some of those same fans use their fingers for other purposes. When you leave the game, try to exercise some patience. You might even qualify for an all-state safe driver discount. Because good sportsmanship should extend to the road. That's all state stand. Are you in good hands? TJ, this supersonic cheeseburger is so great. I gotta tell all my friends about this. You probably just did. Oh yeah, I've told you. Mm -hmm. You know. This is good. I know. Better burgers. Sonic's got them, others don't. Try a supersonic cheeseburger made with two patties, two slices of cheese, and not until you order it. It's not just good, it's Sonic good. Number one ranked offense in the Mountain West Conference is rolling 28-14 Utah. Let's go down now to Anne Marie. Well, guys, if Air Force is going to stay in this game, they can't waste any opportunities. And as a matter of fact, that's their motto this year. They made these shirts that, that say no opportunity wasted. They know most of the teams they play are going to be bigger than them. They just can't waste opportunities as they did in that second quarter. Well, Anne Marie, I don't know. You've heard this before, but Kelly wants one of those T-shirts. Can you get him one? Uh, I think this one's taken. <laughs> I'm Force it back. kick it off to Mezzerol. Out to the 15, to the 20, 25, 30. And he is going to be tripped up as the flag comes out. He has a flag back at the 20. Good effort by Mezzerol. Able to negotiate the 34-yard line, but it may come back. That was a great effort by Mezzerol. Right up the middle. The senior out of Alexandria, Ohio. Tough guy. The wide receiver. Kickoff return guy and the penalties against Air Force. Yeah, holding against Air Force. Holding during the return. Number one. 10-yard half the distance to the goal. First down. The yeah, Overton Spence right there got caught. You know, Alex Smith has not disappointed, has he, today? He really hasn't, but this is the the dilemma Air Force is in. They're going to bring pressure with their outside linebackers. It's called a fire zone blitz. And as we roll the tape right here, if the linebackers don't get to Alex Smith, the result's going to be something bad for Air Force at the other end. He has enough time for Steve Savoy to fall down, get back up, and still catch a touchdown pass. How many times has Steve Savoy fallen down in this game? After the penalty, Air Force will start from the 10. Carney's going to go for something big. Now in trouble. Scrambling around. He throws the ball the last moment he almost was tackled for a safety he was near the goal line Steve Fafita who might be the best nose guard in the conference was there and remember with the grounding call by the quarterback the, the officials don't talk about intent if there's a receiver in the area they cannot call that and obviously the intent was to throw that ball away whoa, whoa. and he was very close to not only getting called for it but it'd be safety if he was in the end well zone. they say he was down he did not get the ball out of time they're at the one yard line so they marked him down at the one the curious position for air force and they wedge it out with adam cole the fullback gets a little breathing room to the five so we're underway here in the second half, and Utah has scored 28 unanswered points. They lead a 28-14. This has been a series that's had a lot of twists and turns, so there could be a lot happen yet. With uh, Kelly Stuffer and Anne Marie Anderson, I'm Gary Bender. Glad to have you with us. It's homecoming here at the University of Utah. Field position. This is a huge play, but they can't make a big mistake right here. Third down, 15 yards to go. Adam Cole, the fullback. Carney going to be dropped. Great reaction that time by Utah. 
and give credit to Marquez Ledbetter, the junior out of Louisville, Mississippi, and he had Carney by the throat. Marquez Ledbetter, number 55, plays what they call an open end, which really means he's more of a linebacker than he is a defensive end, and he does a great job of so slow playing that option. Carney didn't know what to do, and he was it was already too late. He was wrapped up and went to the ground. Boy, this second half has not started well for Air Force. Joshua Jones will snap the ball. Heaton to punt it. High snap. They blocked it. They got a piece of it. It's going to go out of bounds on the near side. That high snap gave Utah a chance. They went after Heaton. Let's see where they're going to mark the ball. They're still walking. They're going to mark it at the 28-yard line. That was Grady Marshall who got a piece of it. And they talked about Grady Marshall in the meetings yesterday. He's their special teams guy, and he almost made a big play right there. How Heaton got this ball underneath Marshall is the big question. Watch the foot here. Does he touch the back of the end zone, which would be a safety? It's hard to tell from that angle, but that's extremely close. How he gets that ball off, I, I have no idea. I have no idea. Here's another look. They're taught to make, take an aiming point in front of the ball. I think he gets a little too deep right there Whoa. and actually allowed Heaton to get that ball out. So that ends up being a very short punt. They're going to mark the ball at the 28-yard line. Utah has come out smoking in the second half. Savoy with a catch, 25-20 to the 18-yard line. And somehow, Air Force has got to start getting this turn around because Utah right now is taking it to them. They are really impressive. They're going to mark the ball at the 17-yard line, a first down. Urban Meyer really talked about he contrasted his offense versus the Air Force offense. When the flex bone of Air Force gets in the rhythm of the game, they're very hard to defend. You get on a roll. It's the same way with his spread offense for Utah. That punt, by the way, on Heaton, the partially blocked punt, went only 24 yards. First down at the 17. Smith trying to keep go wide to the 15 and struggles inside the 10 to the 8. Again, taking some shots. Showing how strong he is. Chris Sutton over to make the stop for Air Force. And Air Force needs to make them at least settle for a field goal on this drive. And Kenny Smith, number 45, right there has a shot. He has contained. He cannot let the quarterback get outside of him or bad things are going to happen. He comes back and hustles and gets in on the play, but he needed to make that two yards deep behind the line of scrimmage. Second down, a long yard to go. The ball at the nine. Utah looks like the defending Mountain West Conference champions. They are impressive. Alex Smith now in the second half, five of six for 72 yards passing. In trouble giving ground. He got away from Rosinski and has to throw it away. But John Rosinski had a shot at him back inside the 15 and shows you Smith is faster than you think. He just continues to escape people. And there was a good example. He's so fluid, it doesn't look like he's moving very quickly, but when you watch film during the week, he just is constantly running away from everybody. Play action pass, he's looking downfield. Great coverage in the end zone right there. Less field to defend. Rosinski gives it a chase. Keep the play alive, but in the end, make a good decision. You need points here. Throw the ball out of bounds, line up again. Again, it would be a moral victory for Air Force if they can make him settle for a field goal. Third down now, and still a long yard to go. And they're going to have to use a timeout, some confusion for Utah. Yeah, and Steve Savoy was going to line up on the wrong side of the field. He did it once in the first half, and Irving Meyer absolutely detests those type of timeouts. And he's had John Madsen pushing him for that very reason. Well, Alex Smith has been something special, and with more on that, here's Anne Marie. Well, guys, Utah's 20-year-old junior quarterback graduated last May with a 3.74 grade point average after just two years in college. Smith graduated from Helix High School in San Diego with a 4.4 GPA because he took so many advanced classes. As you might expect, the brains run in the family. Smith's father is a doctor of education and the principal at his former high school. And his mother graduated from Weber, Weber State after just three years with a degree in political science. Smith admits he does take some ribbing from his teammates, though. They call him Doogie Hauser. People are so mean. <laughs> you know, his uncle is John L. Smith, the head coach at Michigan State. But uh, didn't you have a 3.7 something when you were in college? I didn't even see that level. 
But you know what was amazing? You're talking about two years to get a degree from a major university, but he had 67 approved credits before he ever graduated high school. It's unbelievable, but that also is transmitted on the field in this spread offense. That's why he makes such good decisions. He's so incredibly intelligent. Hey, again, I want to remind you to join the Pac-10 of the Mountain West at this year's Pioneer Pure Vision Las Vegas Bowl. That's December 23rd. It comes to Las Vegas for the ultimate in football and entertainment. For tickets, log on to lvbowl.com. That's the Pioneer Pure Vision Las Vegas Bowl. Here's a big play for Air Force. Third down, they need to somehow make the youth settle for a field goal. Burdett, the tight end in motion. Smith gives up to Johnson. Against the green. Touchdown, Marty Johnson. Right now, Air Force's defense cannot win. They brought, brought pressure from the right side, and simply Air Force or Utah runs a play to the to the, the, their right side away from the pressure. They just locked into that, quite frankly. I tell you, Utah has so many ways to hurt you. Borenson's point after is up, it's good. And it's now a 35 to 14 game. It's hard to believe that at the 11:43 mark of the second quarter, Air Force led this game 14 to nothing. But it's been all Utah since. A lot of life happens in your car. That's why Conoco new quality ProClean gasolines help clean your engine as you drive. So you can focus on more important things. Conoco, life happens between empty and full. If you're looking for 17 different models. Toyota's got it. And if you're looking for cars with legendary quality. Toyota's got it! Like the 05 Corolla and Camry. Toyota's got it. Now choose a lease of just $169 a month on the exciting 05 Corolla. Or $189 a month on the sleek 05 Camry. Plus, you can get low APRs on all your favorite Toyotas. For everything you're looking for. Toyota's got it! Two ask me directions. I went last time. You go. No, I went last time. Can I help you, folks? No matter where in the world you are, there's an easy way to get to Alabama. Just visit 800alabama.com and plan your vacation right down to the last detail. Someday, Browser, the world's going to catch up to us. As we're back, it's amazing how things change so quickly. 14 to nothing, Air Force was up, and now 35 to 14 in favor of Utah. But this is the reason why Air Force was bringing pressure from the top side of the screen. Johnson recognized it and ended up cutting back to the right side. Air Force right now does not have an answer. And Mesereau holds in this kickoff, comes up to the 20, and he'll be grounded to the 21. So now the Falcons need to have some success. Everything has gone south. They have had 35 points thrown at them, and the partially blocked punt. There's just all kinds of things that have gone against them, and uh, one of the things you know about Air Force, they will not quit. There's no quit in an Air Force team, but, boy, they've got a lot of catching up to do. Just a pressing Utah team, Kelly. I, I just really think if they win today, they should move in the top ten ranking wise no question about it they're one of the most impressive teams in the country thus far from the 21 Holstead comes in motion Carney pitches back it's going to be Butler and Butler who had that costly fumble in the first half gets out to the 26 Butler just starving to play a guy's been hurt so much the last two years as well as this year great potential but you got to stay on the football field you're right and somebody for Air Force's offense needs to step up and make a big play right here they cannot go three and out and allow Utah's offense to get back on the football field 
Gain of five, second and five. Schaefer is the fullback. Butler goes in motion. Schaefer gets it to the 30. Got to be a couple of yards short of the first down. It'll be third down. There's still a, a enough time in this football game, Gary, for Air Force to stay within what they like to do, what they're comfortable with, and that's it right there. Have a decent play on first down, get into third and short, pick up a first down, and continue to move the sticks. You just got to chip away. Now, you would say, in years past, Air Force is not a good catch-up team, but that's for Sean Carney, who can throw the ball very well. Carney giving off, they're gonna get the first down. Schaefer pounds it ahead, gets to the 34, so that's a beginning point. You gotta build on something, and that first down may be what could uh, jumpstart this Air Force team. Well, Gary, this Air Force offense isn't really known to be an offense where you can come back, but the last two times against Utah, they came back from yeah. being about three touchdowns down, and they won one of those and took the other one into triple overtime a year ago. Line of scrimmage, the 34. Just inside, seven and a half minutes left in the third. In motion comes Hanley. Hand off to Stevens to the 40, 45, and he may have a first down. Darnell Stevens getting outside. I tell you what, and you can just mark this down. This Air Force team will fight you. And they are right now getting their head handed to them, but they are fighting back, and you can expect that from them. And Air Force is doing a good job of mixing things up, giving the ball to Stevens, really just the traditional lead if they were in a traditional I formation type of set. And Stevens has the speed to get to the outside. He's one of their big play guys. They need one out of him here shortly. First down, just short of the 45. The center is Hubbard. He'll snap it to Carney. Carney gives straight ahead, bursting out of Schaefer. And Schaefer, close to another first down, just short of the 45-yard line. And I tell you, Air Force has gone right back to Air Force football, that pullback option up the middle. Mountain West scores. We were uh, earlier giving you some partials, and uh, we'll update some of those for you as we have 6.52 left in this game. And uh, you can see Colorado State winning. Wyoming beating Ole Miss in Laramie. Joe Glenn is doing a nice job out there. Yep, there's tonight's games at interstate battle between New Mexico and New Mexico State. Second down and a yard. Carney going deep. Down there is Mezzerol, and Mezzerol able to haul it in, and all of a sudden now, Air Force has a first and goal at the eight-yard line. Huge play. We talked about someone needing to step up for this Air Force team and make a play. That time, both quarterbacks, Sean Carney and Mezzerol, got it done. You can see right here, Mezzerol split to the bottom of the screen. Bad coverage looking inside. They thought it was a play-action pass up. Morgan Skelly needed some help out of that corner to come off the hash and make a play. On a second and one, they complete one for 37 yards. First and goal at the eight-yard line. Carney going to give off to Butler. Butler trying to get the corner. Maybe got to the six-yard line. So it's going to bring up a second down. Hackenbrook over there to make the stop as Air Force fighting back at the six-minute mark here of the third quarter. The red zone defense for Utah, I mean, what don't they do well? I mean, their red zone offense is outstanding, and defensively, it's been very tough against this football team. Well, we'll look at it a little bit later. Schaefer, the fullback. Carney to throw. Hits incomplete. He tried to quick look in pass to Jason Brown. Can't make the connection, and it'll bring up a third down. Third and goal. But this is exactly one of the differences that this Air Force team is doing this year. You wouldn't see play action pass and trying to throw the quick slant to a wide receiver down at the goal line, but for two reasons. First, Sean Carney can get it done, and second, Utah is so good in the red zone. We're in Rice Echo Stadium, a homecoming day for Utah. Utah has scored 35 unanswered points. Air Force trying to counter. Third and goal at the six. Carney with the play action. Time to throw, touchdown catch, as the catch is gonna be made by Karsten Stare, the tight end, and that's only the second catch of his college career. Stare playing a place of McMenemy, who was out with a neck injury, so 
a little bit of a comeback. You're right, and throwing the football. Big plays in the passing game. Head coach Fisher very told us they're going to need a handful of them. They're getting them. The question right now is it too late in this football game, but this was a drive that they desperately needed on the Air Force side of the, side of the field. Very impressive drive, and now the point after attempt by Greenaway. Out of the hole of Eaton. The kick is up. The kick is going to be good. And it's now 35-21. And so Air Force has answered. And they got a new belief system, I think, kicking in right now. A stare with the touchdown grab. Yeah, hi. I was wondering, can I get a, uh, a wake-up call tomorrow morning, please? Uh, 8.30 a.m.? Uh, yeah, the thing is, I was wondering, can I, can I get that to go to my, my cell phone I instead of my room? Oh, uh, well, here's the thing. I, 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 I'm not quite sure if I'm going to be in my room tomorrow, so I, I, just, I just thought if, if, if you could call my cell phone, it would uh, cover all, all bases. Please? I don't know what I was thinking. I tried to tell you, genius. I can't believe I'm in this situation. We're not having fun anymore. I'm feeling your pain. I don't know what to do. Hey, look at me. We all make mistakes. Told you about the tires, huh? Yeah. Should have gotten Cooper. Buying tires is a big decision. Next time, get everything you want. Cooper Tires. Don't give up a thing. Colorado Springs, you now have two, two Nissan dealerships to choose from. Shop Nissan North at our brand new state-of-the-art Woodman Nissan at I-25 in Woodman. Or shop Nissan South at Academy Nissan, Bijou and Academy. Colorado's number one Nissan dealership. Right now, drive the Nissan Sentra for just $99 a month. Or grab a hold of the full-size Nissan Titan for $299 a month. Two locations, twice the selection. Plus over 200 high-quality pre-owned vehicles as low as $39.95. Woodman Nissan, I-25 in Woodman. Academy Nissan, Bijou and Academy. Log on to AcademyNissan.com or call 1-800-NEW-NISSAN. Falcon trying to take off here. They have come back a little bit. Drive of 78 yards in nine plays to three minutes and 12 seconds. Karsten Steer, the junior from Lincoln, Nebraska, coming up with the touchdown catch from uh, Carney. And so now Air Force got to get a stop. Well, and the interesting thing will be, Gary, to see if the Utah offense that just spent a few minutes sitting on the sidelines can come back and still retain that rhythm that they've been in since that second quarter. Back deep is going to be Brock Johnson. He is joined back there by Nagahi. Greenaway kicking off. And bring it out will be Nagahi. Nagi, an outstanding kickoff return man. He's like a kamikaze out there. I mean, he is a reckless runner. Brings it out to the 27-yard line, and that will set it up for Utah. And he was averaging just a shade over 27 on that kickoff return coming into this game. And Greenway had did a, done a great job up to that point kicking it out of the end zone, but that's the price you pay by kicking it to him. Nagi, he a guy who, one of the captains, one of the favorite players of Urban Meyer, a guy who is helping Utah for the second consecutive year lead the nation in kickoff returns. From the 27, here come the youths. Marty Johnson, the running back, four wideouts. Smith going to throw right away. Up the middle, Warren makes the catch at the 40, 45 first down. There is a penalty flag inside the 30-yard line. Well, I tell you, Warren has been wide open, and Smith is finding him. That pass over the middle. Kelly's been there all afternoon long. It's going to be a penalty against Utah, so they'll bring it back. And what Ur Urban Meyer has talked about is, well, here after the referee right here. Offense, five-yard penalty, previous spot, replay, first down. What Coach Meyer has talked about is one of the ways that his offense can be stopped is foolish penalties, and there's no more foolish or a penalty that's more foolish than a pre-snap penalty. Look at this, how efficient they've been. Wow. <laughs> Urban a little upset just a moment ago, as you mentioned about the penalty, but if you look at that graphic, yeah. he might be a little cooled down, right? So now it's going to bring up first and 15. Smith, double pumping, looking, going to take off, trying to go wide, and a good effort by Jimmy Cook. The ball is fumbled. Air Force may have it. The ball came out, and they do. Denny Poland stayed after Alex Smith 
and was able to separate the ball. Mark Carlson came up with a fumble recovery. Well, we remember that huge fumble by Air Force right at the end of the second half that Utah took into the end zone. Utah just gave it back right here. A huge play. Good decisions by not throwing into coverage, but then as a quarterback, when you go from a passer to a runner, you have to protect that football, and he just flat didn't do a good job right there. And Air Force does a good job of rallying to the quarterback. Denny Poland really did a nice job of punching that ball out when he got to Alex Smith. Poland from Pittsburgh, PA, went to Central Catholic, the same high school to produce Dan Marino. First down now at the 19-yard line. And uh, Carney keeps fake to the fullback. Carney bouncing just to about the 15-yard line. But all of a sudden now, you can see the body language for Air Force changing. They feel like they've got a real shot at this game. Let's go down to Anne Marie. Well, Gary, that's exactly it. Maybe it's the military mindset, but in the last 10 minutes, these guys have really perked up. You know, a few minutes ago before that touchdown, the defensive coaches were yelling at the defense, show up, show up. Now, these guys are alert, they're ready, and they're not giving up. Yeah, you know, that has been the, the way Air Force has always played this game. They may be overmatched sometimes, but they play hard. Here's Carney keeping, gets to about the 11. He's going to be a couple of yards short of the first down. And that was Hackenbrook again, a former running back, former star out of the state of Oregon. They um, moved him to middle linebacker because Urban Meyer really did away with the fullback so he asked to play middle linebacker and is now the starter for the use look at this red zone today two for two and air force now with a big third down and two carney pitches back stevens trying to get the corner and he will get the first and goal as he's run out of bounds close to the five yard line morgan scowling you saw the speed of Stevens there, the senior out of Midwest City, Oklahoma. And that's what this Air Force offense needs is the speed to the corner. They're sending a receiver down to block Scally, who's responsible to get to that pitch. You see him right there coming to the screen just a tad late, and that's all it takes for speed to get around the corner. First and goal at the six. One wide out is Jason Brown. Butler comes in motion. He gets the ball. Butler fighting his way inside the five. Lunges close to the three. It'll be second and goal there. Utah's defense is very good coming into this game inside the red zone. They had only allowed three touchdowns out of 12 trips into the red zone. But right now, Air Force, I think, has their number. And we said at the top of the telecast, Gary, Air Force has to finish drives. Field goals against Utah is not going to cut it. Second and goal three-yard line. Carney gives up straight ahead is Cole. Cole spinning. It's going to be about at the one-and-a-half-yard line. It'll bring up third down. Now, defensively, they have the number one defense in the Mountain West, allowing only 11 points. You can see yards rushing, but that always gets inflated when you play Air Force. Oh, no question. And yards as a whole defensively, Irving Meyer and Coach Whittingham, they don't care about yards between the goal lines. It's stopping them when the team gets down there. If Air Force says you get it here on third, I think they'll go for it on fourth. You said it earlier. They need a touchdown. Third and goal at the yard and a half yard line. Carney fighting, backing in. Touchdown, Air Force. And we've got a football game. We really do, and we should expect that. Air Force isn't going to give up. They've come back the last couple of years, but it's in their nature to come back. They don't give up in football games, and they get it from their head coach, yep. Fisher DeBerry. When he came out at halftime, did you hear the energy Whoa. in that interview? And that has been transferred to his football team. Well, he's 66 years young. He's a Rocky Mountain icon. Fisher DeBerry, 21st year, and right now, with this PAT, all of a sudden, the homecoming crowd here at Utah is going to get very nervous. It is a seven-point game. 35-28, 214 to go, and we have a shootout. The ebb and flow of football is an impressive thing. The fullback is diving in like he usually does, but Carney pulls it out, finds enough to get into the end zone. He's doing a good job of managing the football game, getting his football team in the right play, and more importantly, he's finishing drives. 
finish and drives has to do with the quarterback. The quarterback has to man have the mentality that we're not going to settle for a field goal. We have to get a touchdown, especially against this how high-powered Utah football team. Carney with his third rushing touchdown, his longest to 47. Look what he's done. 8 of 10, 141 yards, and a 5-yard, a 2-yard, and a 47-yard touchdown. And it's that's becoming the norm for this young man. He was 12 out of 14 a week ago, so he's done this before, and this young man is just flat impressive. So, Air Force, who looked like they were going to get hammered here. They were down 35 to 14, now have come back with 14 points, now down 35-28, green away to kick off. He needs to kick this out of the end zone and not give Nagahi a chance to return it. And uh, it's going to be returnable. Nagahi's going to bring it in at the 4, at the 10, at the 15, at the 20, 25, and that's about where he got the last time. And so now Utah trying to regroup after earlier just hammering this Air Force team. And all of a sudden, this is becoming a typical series battle we mentioned earlier. The last three games have been decided by a combined seven points. And Air Force right now de defensively needs to continue to give Alex Smith a diversity of different looks at this point in time. They can't just always drop eight and expect him to make a mistake. Good point. Smith now with a four wide out package again. Gonna throw, broken up, deflected. Good reaction that time. He's trying to go to Paris Warren. Nathan Terrazone, yeah. number 99. Terrazone has been quite a story, Kelly. He's been the surprise of the football team defensively. Senior out of law, Crescenta, California. And a guy who, you know, he's not very big, about 240 pounds, but he plays with great heart. But what he did that time, if a defensive end tries to get to the quarterback and just can't get there, the next thing you do is you get your arms up in the air and try to impede his view of the receiver and play volleyball if you have to, like you did on that play. Second down and 10, same set as the previous one. Smith gives up Marty Johnson and the pick running back close to the 30-yard line. It'll bring up third down, and let's go to Anne Marie. Well, guys, during the week, Air Force players wear small black rubber bands on the ring finger of their right hand. They say that's where they'll put their championship ring for the Mountain West. It's a goal they have as a team, despite being picked to finish near the bottom of the conference. They wanted these rings. The captains handed them out to remind them that's the goal. Don't listen to the polls. Yep, no opportunities wasted, as you said earlier. Third down and seven yards to go. Looks like they're going to come after Smith. They put the blitz on by Overton Spence. Throw up the field, broken up. That pass intended for Savoy. Air Force responding very quickly. And the guy that broke it up is shaken up on the play. That's Chris Sutton. Chris Sutton did a great job of, he was up in a, in a tight, position to the line of scrimmage on Savoy and then he continued to per move back in the secondary with him Alex Smith just should have gone somewhere else I tell you this game is just amazing I mean you saw those 35 unanswered points everybody's thinking well we may leave early here today this game may be over and all of a sudden it's a seven point game the momentum has switched and Air Force thinks they can pull this out. And what Savoy was trying to do there is a double move, which got Chris Sutton number six for Air Force earlier in the game. He did a good job right there playing the receiver. He saw what was going on in the backfield. He saw the double move, and then he did a great job of defending that. And I think he got a, a knee from Cameron Hodges right to the mid-back. And, and that is incredibly painful. Yeah, he's walking around the sophomore. We mentioned so many freshmen and sophomore in the top 64 of the team. Here's the punt by Kabakovich. Drifting back, we have a different man feeling this, as that is J.P. Waller because Sutton could not due to the fact he was shaken up on the play. And it was a good job, good decision to fair catch that by Waller because Air Force once again was coming after the punter. There was no return on. At the 22 now is where Air Force has it. And they are down by seven after a 49-yard punt by Kavakovich. I tell you, Kelly, the more you're around this game, I guess you should never be surprised, huh? The more I mean, you're around it, the less you know. Is that what you're <laughs> trying to say? I think that's what I'm trying to say. This game looked like it was going south, and all of a sudden, we have a real shootout from the 22. Carney 
gives off to Butler. Butler trying to go wide, lowers his head, gets across the 25 to the 26. Steve Fafita, we've called his name a lot today, the junior out of Huntington Beach. Honorable mention all conference a year ago. Air Force does a really good job of mixing up their plays. They have the triple option, but then they throw stuff like this at you. Butler running the football. He does a good job of picking his way through there and getting the most out of what was actually very little. Second down, gain of four, second and six. Schaefer's the fullback. Holstage comes in motion. Carney fakes the pitch, cuts up the field. He's to the 35, the 40. First down to the 42-yard line. I think that football came out as well. Boy, I tell you, though, he faked it. Did he recover it? Let's see. They're unpiling. Utah says it's their ball. No indication officially They're yet. trying to decide whether he was down right now. Very important call by the officials in this game. Boy, this is a big, big development right now. You know, and as a, a ball carrier, you're protecting it against who you don't see. No, they're giving it to Utah. Wow. Carney... We have to see it on a replay. I did not see the ball come out. And that is a huge, huge turning point in this game. Absolutely. Let's see if we can make it out right here. As a ball carrier, you protect the ball, not who you have in your vision, but who you don't see. Right to the right of the screen, the feet to right there comes into the play. A defensive lineman hustling down the field. It was hard to tell whether that ball ever came out. Now you can see Urban Meyer thought it did. Fisher did not. He thought it was down. But it's going to go to Utah. I could not tell from that replay. Great hustle by a big defensive lineman in Fafita getting downfield. So now at the 42, Utah has it at the Air Force end of the field. Here's Marty Johnson trying to go wide. Nothing.